How's it going? Recently I've been on holidays, but I don't really stop, so I've been going back to basics, having a look at software rendering, and it's really enjoyable. It's closer to the traditional computer science problem solving sort of domains. We don't really have this big graphics card that we can just throw data at and it handles it just fine. <clears throat> we actually have to, you know, formulate problems and stuff. And I've really been enjoying it. And I'll be making some videos on my results soon. But it has led to many long nights, many long sessions of problem solving, debugging and, and things. And so I just wanted to put together a few thoughts on general advice for beginners learning programming. When it comes to advice, I can't specifically tell you what to do, what language to use, which framework, Unreal versus Unity, milk chocolate versus white chocolate, maybe even dark chocolate, or my personal favorite, chocolate with mint. That's yeah. But anyway. From time to time, I will make suggestions like learn Python, but the only rationale behind that suggestion is people should start learning and keep learning and Python's just easy. But anyway, the advice that I'm giving here is general and no matter what you're working in, it, it should apply. Just before I get into the actual advice, just a really vague sort of cover all, which I try to emphasize is you're always good enough to start. When you're learning something, when you're practicing something, you're always good enough to start, okay? I don't know who started this misconception that programmers have to be geniuses, but the biggest hurdle I see beginners facing is imposter syndrome. It's really messed up because the only way to improve is literally to just get out there, make mistakes, and then try again. You know, go out there, go make the world's worst, least stable hello world. I mean, What's the worst that could happen? Number one, never try to be more than two to three hours away from a working program, okay? It's a horrible feeling. It's a really horrible feeling when you feel like there's 10 things that you need to fix and thing nine depends on thing seven. It's, it's really bad. So try to set that goal of never being more than a few hours away from a working program. What does that mean? It forces you. It means you may have to break things down into sub steps. Okay, my program works if I just get to this point and log out the results. Okay, it's a it's a while loop, but I'm just going to run one iteration, log the results, and then check. Just whatever it takes to never get too deep into it. Number two, always be based. There's one time I was tutoring a, a math course and the feedback I got from students was that I was, quote, based and math pilled. And that's probably the best feedback I've ever gotten. So when I say always be based, what I mean is you need what you're doing, the program you're solving, the code that you're writing needs to be based on a guiding principle. That is a mathematical model. If you're running a complex algorithm, it needs to adhere to some sort of diagram that might be really helpful. Um, it's really good to have simple test cases which adhere to the mathematical model with clear expected results. Do you know what I mean? It's really tempting, like let's say you're doing backface culling on a surface or something and the, the normal dot product thing just isn't working. What, so you just flip a component of the normal and it seems to work? It's really tempting to do that, to set things up so that instead of your program, program has to mesh with reality, do you know what I mean? you're not trying to do the other thing. You're not trying to change one line because it seems like it works in the moment, but you've violated your entire model that everything's based on. Number three, debug from the beginning. Okay, so imagine this scenario. You've been programming for three days. On Monday, you made function A. On Tuesday, you made function B, which uses function A. And then on Wednesday, you made function C, which uses function B. Okay. Fine, so we run it and now function C isn't working. Now it's tempting to put yourself through the ringer on function C. I mean, that's the last one that you wrote and everything else is working. And I mean, you should check function C. That is the, you know, it's probably some errors there, but okay, hot take, controversial opinion. There's a higher probability that the error is in function A. Okay, it's just propagation of errors and the fact that you have a bunch of test cases, but there's just no way to cover every single test case. 
when you have a function written and then other functions call it, that is a better test of the function, honestly. So yeah, by all means, go and check the most recent thing that you wrote, check the last line that you wrote, the last function you wrote, but consider that you should probably go back to the beginning and test from the beginning. There's nothing wrong with that. It's, it's a good practice. And my last piece of advice is breathe. Okay, so let's say you're coding and you're in flow state. It's really easy to get to a point where you're implementing a complex function which has a bunch of dependencies and you end up mentally juggling a few concepts in your head at the same time. It's a great idea just to stop, take stock of your function, your project, the concepts you're working with. You may want to take a function and break it down into sub functions, even though performance wise may not be optimal. That's okay. The point is that a problem which is well formulated and understood and defined is solvable. And having a bunch of ideas in your head, it's fine when you're in the moment, but it's a good idea every few hours to just take stock of your situation and take breaks. Okay, this is knowledge work and your brain is this unfathomable, unfathomable supercomputer that solves problems. There's sort of two ways of thinking. You've got diffuse thinking and focused thinking and focused thinking can be very intense, but diffuse thinking can also be very powerful. If you just have the problem formulated in your mind and then you take a break, your brain will solve it in the background. It's, it's magic, it's magic. Anyway, I mean, I don't know how many times I've just gotten into a complete lock, a mental deadlock, and the only thing I had to do was rest. And it came good. But anyway, those are just a few thoughts of mine. Happy coding, as always. I hope you're doing well, and I'll see you again soon. All right, now I just remembered this extra um, piece of advice. I'm not sure if this is useful or not, but it helped me. Um, the problem you're solving is probably already solved. It's, it's probably not an open problem. And what do I mean by that? Well, just back in the past when I was getting into math, I just sat, I would sit down and, and solve a bunch of problems. And sometimes I would get stuck. And just the knowledge that, just the knowledge that the thing was solved helped me to motiv motivate myself to be stubborn and look at new techniques and be inventive and not stop until I'd solved the problem. And the same applies to programming. There's nothing that's I don't know, maybe you're doing something really technical which has never been done before, but it's probably it's probably within your gr <laughs> within your grasp if you know what I mean. Anyway, so yeah, cheers. Have a good one. Bye.